this, cut, drill the bone and whatever to get the tooth out. Elevate the tooth out, or use forceps, pick it up, smooth it off, and sew it off. Okay, so that's the way we do a surgical. So do we know what any of these things are? Don't, and it doesn't matter if you don't, because uh, you know, it's not a test. Um, do you know what these things are called? Cheek retraction. Yeah, that's oh. a kill knot. Kill I don't know why we have this as for an elephant the most. <laughs> you know, we, we, we never use that unless we want to get dropped on the floor. Is that you know, a, that's a Minnesota, um, that's a flat retractor. Yeah. Last and that's for using upper eight, so it looks pretty yep. obvious what it would do. It would just pull the cheek and the flap right out of the way. You know, this, this is a rose tongue retractor. What was that one called? Rose. They're all on here, so you can lay, marry that up with that. I'll oh, okay. copy that off for you too. That's a rose. This is a roundly sponge holder. Yanka sucker. Lax. Tongue retractors or max retractors, broad and narrow. Mosquito artery forceps. These are the modern towel clips. You know your boat by Parker, don't you? Mm -hmm. And that's a Maltz, a periosteal elevator. A Howarth. A Ward spoon. Cumine scaler or Mitchell's trimmer. Your elevators, Cooper's one, two, and three. Warwick James left and right as you're looking at them. Criers left and right. Upper posteriors. Kipling's angled faucet, a bone file, which you can only use in one direction, which is towards yourself. Gillies dissecting. I hate the term rat tooth tweezers. They're actually Gillies dissecting faucets. Cry wooden needle holder. And long straight, but just a straight scissor. They've taken, they don't use these ones on the trays anymore, they use these ones. And dual mayo scissors. Okay. And then your faucets. We've got um, lower hawk, cow horns, which I'll observe and never use. Lower universals, lower fine. You know, the, the, uh, these are your hawk. So the beak goes on the buckle, right and left. Okay, can you see that? The beak goes on the buckle of the tooth. So it's as you're looking at it, so the carrying bit to your left, it's just like it is in the mouth. Left and right. Upper, oh, well there they are again. Upper, uh, they're not upper universal, they're upper posteriors, upper fines, upper anterior long beaks and short beaks. Okay, so do you know where you would use those forceps on what teeth? Um, anterior teeth. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. Mm -hmm. including canines. Yep. yep. And those ones are just canines? Oh no, you no. use them, well you could use them mostly on fours and fives. Oh okay. Mm -hmm. your, these are fines are root forceps. So your upper posteriors you'd use on fours and fives. I mean, you'd never put that them on my anterior tooth. You know, it's, it's the shape of the tooth that it goes on to. And then your molar forceps, which are on six, sevens, and eights, but often on upper eights because they're single, uh, because of the shape of the roots, you just use those. Um, lower universals and lower fines, and as it says, fines again are a root forcep. Lower universals you can use on any tooth, but mostly. Um, just from five to five. And you'll be doing this with, you know, in the Aboriginal community. Your cow horns, which are for molars, and the same with the hawks. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Pretty much lower um, molar roots, or let's say you're doing a surgical um, procedure of a lower eight. He's decoronated um, and split it and wants to elevate the roots out. That's what they're for. They're really dangerous instruments to use so don't you know you've got to be so careful because I've seen upper seven roots amputated while taking up roots out they're really um, you need to be very careful with them and then your fickling angle force is just purely for just picking things up 
I'm so getting the tooth out and let's say we're doing a surgical removal of, a, of a, an eight, you know, so then they just use some mosquito forceps to get bits of tissue out and stuff like that. Your bone file, your gillies dissecting just to pick tissue up and you use these all week. Um, your crawl with needle holders and then your scissors. These are non-dissecting, they are non-dissecting. We never use them, I don't know why they're on the tray. Um, this we just use for, um, you know, um, to retract the tongue. Your amp is sponge holder is just for uh, prepping the patient. There's a couple of different irrigation, uh, sorry, prep solutions that you can use. Again, it boils down to surgeon's preference. Most of them use chlorhexidine with citrimide 0.5%. It's an aqueous based solution, so they use that. And then you've got your lax. And again, um, that can be used for retracting, um, the, retracting the tongue, the so or sometimes if they do uninterrupted threes in, uh, in the palate, um, and they strip the whole palate away, he'll bend this. They, uh, you can get malleable ones too. Um, they'll bend that way. Hi, how are you? They'll bend that to just um, elevate or to hold the, uh, the you know, the. Uh, soft tissue of the palate yeah, out of the way so that they can drill around and get the tooth out. Hello, How are you? Right. Busy? Yeah. Now these are your McKesson's bite props, small, medium and large. Pretty much we only use the medium size one. You've seen them used, I'm sure. And then your Minnesota. This is a modified Minnesota. That's a flap. They use that to just hold the flap out of the way. That's a very popular instrument. There we go. Again. Oh, the that size of the blade. Yeah. So one's These have been pretty. They've been used. You can see. Yeah. Um, what happens? When, I'll just get a tissue. Sorry. Mm -hmm. and, you know yeah, that you well, almost yeah. never see that use. Um, for, so that's used. So then they can, you know, get the couplings down and just elevate them out. So that's what they're aiming to do is to form a gutter small enough just to fit in a number one couplings. Then they'll either decoronate the tooth and split it and get then get you know the different roots out the distal and then the mesial and then of course you use it to expand the sockets when you're extracting teeth okay. that that's um that's the preferred instrument the number one always and then you move up depending on what's going on but pretty much just the number one this is a mouth mirror this is a Bard Parker. This is a Howard's nasal respiratory. These are the malts. <laughs> yes, this is a malt. And then you can start testing each other. Actually, Dr. Machado's got a clearance. This is a Ward spoon. Oh, wow. This is yeah. a Q-Mine scaler. Yeah.